something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms Restorations and Repairs here in the mountains, North Carolina. And today, today we'll be taking this 2007 Subaru Outback wagon and we're going to add a ADF, that's Anderson Design and Fabrication, lift kit. We're going to put a two inch lift on the front and the rear. After doing that, we'll take the old car to town. I'm waiting. Uh, the tires didn't come in time to film the installation, but we're going to take these tires off the rims and we've got some nice meaty all-terrain tires that we're going to be putting on this. So I'm really looking forward to this. This is a customer of ours. I don't uh, normally do lift kit installations, but this, this is a good customer and we wanted to give her something cool for Christmas. So I, uh, I'm happy that we're able to do this work. This thing is going to be a little more aggressive and the family likes to go camping. They want to be able to do some, I wouldn't say trail riding, but they want to be able to get into those uh, kind of harder to get to camping spots. And so this will give this little Subaru just the right amount of lift to allow them to clear, you know, maybe some bigger ruts, some tree stumps, stuff like that, especially with those all-terrain tires. These cars are really quite capable. Uh, I've never owned a Subaru. I've worked on many, many Subarus. So I speak from some position of authority on this when I say that other than the head gasket issues that these cars tend to suffer from, they're actually a very reliable car for a very uh, interesting design. Anyway, we're going to pull it in. I want to take another quick look. If you watch the video on my other channel, you'll see the unboxing video that I made. But we'll take another quick look at the components that come with this kit. We'll get the car that I currently have inside out of the garage, and we will get started on doing a lift kit. I'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to do this. Now, the kit says, hey, you don't need to do an alignment afterwards, but for this customer, um, the car is a little bit out of alignment anyway. We actually did do a before and a check on it, and I will just kind of compare. I don't think I'll film it, but I will compare the before to the after when it comes to how, if it really was basically the same alignment when we're done. But it's a nice looking kit, so let's go check it out. Here it is, here's the whole kit, nice. It's not overly complex looking. It doesn't come with a detailed set of instructions, but that's what I'm going to make for you today. Uh, I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being pure amateur hour and 10 being take it to a, <laughs> take it to a professional, this looks like a 3. This looks like a 3. I think you could do this here in your yard. I'm going to be using a mid-rise lift, but I, I, I'm positive you can do that without the use of a lift. Uh, just Just going to have to get a little more creative when crawling around underneath it, but... Let's do this thing. All right, well, I've got the car up in the air. And again, you can do this with jack stands. I'm not going to do it with jack stands because I'm old and my back hurts. But what we're gonna do first, take off the fronts. The fronts, from looking over the instructions, look way easier to install because really we're just gonna be installing the spacers and, uh, and that's it. The back side is a bigger deal. The multi-link suspension needs to be dropped down and then the spacers need to be installed. So that's gonna be a little more time consuming. This, if you've ever replaced struts, especially quick struts on a car, this is gonna seem real familiar. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the wheels off. You can see the front and, uh, and we'll get going. Let's move the camera in closer and we'll go and take a look at what comes next. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, this is a 12 mil and that's a 12 mil. You're gonna remove both these bolts here. And that's going to free up our brake line and our ABS line here. Now I'm using air tools for all this. And that's just to speed the process up, but it totally does not need to have air tools in order to do this job properly. So that's free. This one here, wiggle a little bit, that's free. Next, we're gonna be removing these two bolts. However, this top one is, in, is an eccentric cam bolt. I'll move the camera to this side and I'll show you that I'm gonna mark this with a magic marker. Again, um, they recommend, and I would recommend, doing an alignment on this um, after, you, after you take these bolts out, but it's not necessary as long as you make your marks. Supposedly, it should all line back up. That bolt right there. Is your eccentric bolt so what I'm doing and it's kind of hard to see where I'm marking but I'm just gonna mark a line here at the top okay and that's just gonna give me a rough camber adjustment and when I get back down to the shop in town 
and do a professional alignment on it, it'll be awfully close. In fact, a lot of times if you get this close, it's close enough. All right, I'm gonna remove those two. Before I move on though, I do wanna show you the last bolt we're gonna remove because it's pretty hard to see it. And that is that bolt right there. This is the sway bar link bolt. And I'm gonna pop the sway bar back and just drop it down. The reason you have to take this off is the tension that is on these control arms. When I put my lift kit in, when I put the spacer in the top, this arm is gonna be sitting much farther down. And it's kind of preloaded at this height. So if I try to do that, I'll be pushing down, pushing down, trying to get the whole control arm to go down and it'll be really struggling against the spring or against the uh, tension on this. So I'll release that and by setting that back with the, everything lowered, it'll be in good shape. So you can't turn it from this side because you'll rotate the eccentric bolt. So what you wanna do here is hold this side with a wrench, 19 mil, and then this side you're gonna remove the, the uh, nut. And you can see when it comes out, if I don't lose these, that's an eccentric bolt. See how it's kind of egg-shaped? That's how we adjust camber on a Subaru. And a little harder to see, get that closer. Okay, do the same thing here with the bottom one. And this bolt down here might be a little harder to take out, so just kind of wiggle it until it comes free. Now, this is important. Now I do this, their instructions don't say that this is necessary, but they do point out the fact that it's really easy, rotate that up, to pull the inner CV joint apart inside the boot, which is a mess. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this center CV axle bolt out, push the CV axle in. So I'm gonna be releasing the tension on it, because if this flops out, it can pull the CV joint out. And that, uh, a lot of times, it's you can put them back together, but it's such a hassle. Most people have breaking boots and all the rest, and so I highly recommend you do that. And that's a 32 millimeter. Oh. And that's a 32 millimeter that really did not want to come out. But once it's out, the splines are not rusted in, so that's really good. All right, and the last step is to remove this, and that is the uh, sway bar end link bolt down here. So if you don't have an impact gun, a 14 millimeter wrench, or better yet, ratcheting wrench, and an Allen head, I think it's a six mil that fits in there, might even be smaller than that. Hold that, rotate. Sometimes with impact, you can get it loose. And that's it. She's free, once she's free, we can proceed with removing the strut. Okay, with our sway bar free, our lines free, our CV axle pulled back, we just wiggle until it pops loose. And then make sure that our axle is out far enough that it won't get in the way. Beautiful. Now when I lower this thing down, I'll be sliding it out this side. I can pull down on this enough to get it around. So let's lower it down. You're gonna wanna have one hand on this and another hand up top to do it. It's a one-man job. All right, one, two, three, 12 millimeter bolts. Our strut mount, I'm gonna take this hand I'm going to hold on to the strut cartridge from below, and I'm going to use a gun to undo these three. So let's do that. I'm just going to place these up here. And it's this last one when things start to move freely, so hold on tight. That's it. She's free. Let's go over to the bench and install the lift. Okay, here we are with the kit. This is going to be the right-hand side one. Right hand is passenger side, left hand is driver's side. H for hood, so this face is back. These are eccentric. So if we don't do this right, well, we gotta have a problem. Now, bolting them on, it doesn't matter which direction you bolt them on. The hat on the stock, stock Subaru is universal fit. So we'll go ahead and get these started. And then we're gonna tighten these down and just reinstall. That's all there is to it. The front is, like I said, not a difficult task at all. It looks like the rear, having to drop the multi-link is gonna be more time consuming, but so far I would say anybody who has ever done any kind of work with a strut is gonna do just fine with this. I'm gonna go around each one of these twice, make sure that everything's seated properly. And that is it. Let's 
go put this thing back on. Snaking this up in here sometimes can be a little tricky. Certainly if you had an extra set of hands, it would make life easier. But it's not necessary. Just making sure that you're facing the right way when you install it. And you can easily see it. I'm going to get these started and I'll put the camera up on top so you can see what's going on here. But Starting by hand. Finish them off with a gun. That's it. As you can see, it all fits back in place down there. And here we are up top. Our little ADF symbol, which is kind of cool. The H is facing towards the front. And that's it. Not bad. Nice looking. Okay, we'll raise it back up. We'll get the bottom stuff bolted back in. I won't film doing both sides. I'll just show you on each side how it works. And then we'll move to the back. Okay, so you're going to have to push down a little bit. Get our two bottom bolts in here. I've just got them in here loosely. Before I go any further, I've got to line up my mark. And I'm not sure if I can see it and do it. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to bring that around until it is roughly where the old one was, right? A little more. Right about there. And then I'll tighten that top bolt. Then I'll tighten the bottom bolt. Going to hold this one and tighten this one, right? Oops. Would help if I was going the right direction. There we go. Same thing with the bottom. Great. Now we've got to reattach <clears throat> both the brake line brake hose I should say and the ABS sensor okay. and lastly I will reinstall the sway bar link all right before mounting my tire I've got to put my axle nut back on And I'll get a uh, hammer and punch that divot in there. That's it for the fronts. I'll remount the wheels and we're ready to move on to the rear. All right. Sorry about the rain, but that's what we got. It is time to move on to the back. And uh, this is where the bread and butter's at. So I'll try to get this filmed as best as possible. First thing we're going to do is remove both the rear tires. And then we're going to remove the lower strut bolts. And then we're going to remove the upper strut bolts. Now. We're going to move the upper strut bolts, then we'll remove the lower strut bolts. That'll give us the opportunity to actually get the struts out without a second hand. The bolts for the top of the strut are actually inside the car, so when putting it back together again, you're going to need a second set of hands to hold that or get those bolts started for you. But let's get the tires off. All right, here we are in the back of the Outback, and uh, we fold this piece of paneling here up and over. Fold the seats down. You don't have to disconnect anything, really. Just kind of wiggle it out of the way and that exposes these there's one right there and one right there it is a 14 ratcheting wrench that i'm going to be using to get these out of here and uh, it's a little tough to get it over the side but you don't have to take all this stuff out and getting back in might be a little more difficult but i'd rather not take apart half the interior if i don't have to and there we go we're ready to go back into the car and do the dirty all right, here is, uh, here's our strut assembly, and down here is our bottom bolt. We're going to go ahead and remove the bottom bolt. There's a nut here and a bolt there. Take that out, and that'll allow us to drop this down. Like I said beforehand, though, I've already been up inside. I've already been up in here and uh, taken the two bolts out, so this thing is kind of just free hanging. All right, I'm going to take off the... Uh, <coughs> if I can get in there. Yeah, I can get in there. I'm going to take off the sway bar link here, and actually, this hopefully is the only sway bar link I'm going to take off. I don't want to, if I don't have to, I don't want to take both of them off. They, a lot of times these things get stuck on there. They don't want to come loose after you get them in there. And so if I can uh, save this customer some money by not replacing these, this one looked like it had been replaced fairly recently. We'll go ahead and do that. There we go. I'm going to slide that back out of the way. All right. And that should allow both sides to move up and down, so that's good. 
With the two bolts removed from the top on each side, we are now ready to take our bottom strut bolt out. And that's this long bolt here. It is a 19. And I'm going to take it with an impact gun here and hold it with a 19 wrench on that side. Once we get this bolt out, and sometimes it has to be backed out, this will drop. So be careful. I'd you know, put a hand on it and hold it in place, and we'll be able to snake this thing out. We can put our spacers on, but before reinstalling the struts, it's time to drop the entire rear cradle. And that is probably the most difficult part of this little process. And it's not one that I'm really looking forward to, but it has to happen in order to get this done for the customer. So let's do it. There we go. And she's out. That tension, you saw this thing pop up, or I hope you did. That tension is the reason why we have to lower the entire cradle down in order to stuff this all back in. It's under a lot of tension as it is. If we try to pry this whole control arm down, all these multi-link suspension, if we were gonna try to push that even farther down, well, it just, it just wouldn't work. <laughs> so let's go ahead. I'll do the other side off camera. We'll put them on the table and install our spacers. And here we are. There's not a lot to this either. Uh, I'm going to take these bolts off here and we'll insert this in and these are not beveled like the other side these are just perfectly flat there's no left there's no right there's no inside there's no outside so they just slide on there and we'll tighten those down that's also a 14 and I'll do that to the other side as well all right, I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to make sure I was right about my intuition before I filmed it, so I did go ahead and do the driver's side. You can see the block back there, the block here, and you can't see it, but the uh, spacers for the trailing arms are also installed. The manual, I'll back this out a little bit. The manual says to take support the uh, pumpkin right there, and then take all these bolts out, every one of them, on both sides. And uh, that sounded like a really bad idea to me. So I didn't want to do that. So what I did is what I do when I'm working on uh, front cradle work. Like if I'm going to replace the engine on a car that has a uh, cradle, I'm not taking all the bolts out at once. I am going to loosen the bolts and drop them down so that I have access. And what that's doing is it's allowing me to work on one side of the vehicle without risking dropping the entire cradle out of the car uh, by having all the bolts out. Because what if I pry down too hard on something and it teeter-totters? So I'm gonna differ with Anderson Design on this one. I'm gonna say that I would recommend you loosen the bolts. And, and there's a lot, there's a lot of there's a lot of threaded bolt that goes up into the frame of the car, like that much at least. So all four of them I lowered down about yay much. And then I went ahead and lowered this side. I took this side all the way out once I had supported it. And I was able to, with just a pry bar, pry down just a little bit, slide those blocks into place. So let me, uh, I'll show you from a different angle. Right, so here it is. You can see the block, and there's actually quite a bit of gap and quite a bit here still in it. And the same with that one. Right, and the same with the block here. And I'm not going to crawl up under there or show you, but there's the other two bolts are right there. Lots and lots of room, right? And I never was at risk at any time of the whole cradle coming out. One of the complaints, as a matter of fact, the only complaint that I heard from another installer when I was doing some research on this was that he had a very difficult time lining up the cradle bolts once he had got everything loose. And I totally can understand that because once you take the last two bolts out of this thing, it could shift on the on the jack stands. It could shift on the pump jack. So really, I would say the way that I'm doing it, I'm going to show you here on the other side, is uh, is probably the better way to go about doing it. You can see I have tons of slack still in this, and that's because I'm about to lower the other side and do the same thing. So let's do it. Okay, I've already uh, I've already loosened up a little bit. You can see there's just the slightest gap there. But what I'm going to do now is take these bolts here loose. Right, drop this all the way out, drop this all the way out. I'll pop these two pucks here out of here, we'll pry down a little bit and get our new ones in and we'll be back together in no time. I was worried about this part of the job 
I'm not so worried about it. It seems to be going fairly well. I actually feel like installing the struts is going to be the hardest part just because of how much downward force it took to get these on in the first place uh, or to get them out. You know, there's so much upward pressure on that. Even with these spacers, I think it's going to be a little difficult. But let's go ahead and do it. So. All right, got that out. And we'll take out this front one. Got that out. And I'm just gonna loosen up the bolts over here. I think I already have for the most part, but we'll make sure that those are loosened enough to get our pieces out of the way. And we're ready to go. Plenty of room. Okay. I'm gonna pop these off here. One, there we go. So these we trash because the spacers are gonna fill in that gap plus some. And these, uh, I thought these were gonna be uh, soft rubber. They're not, they're, I think they're cast aluminum. All right, there's one. Okay, so here we are in the back. It's really hard to show the fronts so I'm just going to demonstrate on this one. It's the same for all four. It's just impossible to film all four. We're going to slide our block in here. And for right now, I'm going to turn it to the back here so you can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm going to feed this bolt here with the washer and a lock washer. Okay, I've got it sitting there. I'm going to feed this up through and line it up with that upper hole. There we go. Once I've got it started by hand, now I'm going to take this 3 8 extension and this 7 8 or 22 millimeter. I'm going to feed it up through, attach the two, and then I can screw these in by hand, right? Going up, going up. All right, there we go. And so that's all I can actually show you on that because now I need to rotate it like this and the camera just can't get in there between the uh, wheel well and the gas tank and everything else that's around here. But that's, that's all there is to it. Same thing is going to apply for the bottom one. You're going to take your bolt um, through, put a lock on it and washer and tighten that together. Squeeze those two together and you'll be done. It's really nice on this side. This car has an aftermarket exhaust system so this muffler is missing. It made it a little easier to, fi to film this but... The process is not difficult by any means. It's just a little bit, um, I would say, stressful, especially if you're not a mechanic, you know, having all this stuff dangling over your head. And just be sure to, you know, really secure everything nicely. But I'm going to go ahead and bolt that in there. I'll do the same with the front. And we'll be ready to start reassembling. So this is, uh, this is going along pretty well. Oh, one more thing I do want to point out. The original bolt has this uh, very large washer on that. You are going to reuse that. So I've got my new bolt here, and when you put it in, you kind of got to hold it up through there, wiggle that around a little bit, it fits in, looks like I'm off a little bit, so I'll get a pry bar to uh, pry that back some. There we go. Alright, once that's in, washer and lock washer and all that up on the top. Now, honestly, with three of the four in place, if something were to go wrong, it shouldn't go all that wrong. So I will tighten up everything. We'll be ready to reinstall our struts. Okay, really hard to see. Our block, the double block goes back here, and the single block fits in right there, and we're just gonna hammer down on these. And it's time to tighten everything else up.
I'll do the same on the other side. It'll be time to uh, tighten the four carriage bolts, or the actual subframe bolts. The top halves are already tightened up. That's what I showed you in the last bit. All four of those are tightened. Now it's time to tighten those. We're ready to do this thing. Well, there it is. There's, you can see the block. I don't think you can see the other block, but the other block's there. Spacer. Oh, focus, focus, focus. Spacer. <laughs> and the other side is the same. Actually, it gives you a whole lot more room to work on any suspension component should the need arise. But yeah, there she is. Um, now, let's get those struts back in. And that, my friends, is that. I've reattached the strut up on top here with the spacer. Got it bolted back in. I've just gone back and checked everything. I did have one sway bar link loose in the rear. I will say, I don't think you would need to take that sway bar link loose, really. Because you're dropping everything down and the sway bar is part of that equation, it didn't really make that big of a difference. Nothing like the front, anyway. So let's go ahead. We'll put the wheel on and uh, lower it down. I think the sun may have gone down. It's probably closer to six now this time of year. The sun's probably already set. But I do want to check it out. So we're going to take it for a test drive. And of course, I will also show you what it looks like with new tires on and aligned. And we'll talk about my overall feelings of the project because it's been an interesting thing. A little more in depth than I originally thought when I ordered. I thought we were looking at spacers and sway bar not sway bar bushing links. I thought we were just going to lower the bushings down a bit to compensate. I did not have any idea that this multi-link rear suspension would require so much work. That being said, I mean, it's still something that could easily be done in a driveway, but plan on a weekend, you know, as a professional, but an older one. Um, this took me about four and a half hours start to finish. And without a uh, lift and without air tools, I would say you could double that. So a really long day or two days. Anyway, let's get the wheels back on and lower it down. Getting ready for her first drive. Looks pretty good. Definitely, you can definitely tell the gap in the wheel well. And of course, AT tires will help eat up that space. But uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, here we are. The lift kit's done. We got a nice set of Geo Lander. Our Yokohama Geolander ATs installed for the customer. Two 25 6017s. That's the size of that tire. You get an idea of the gap. There's enough clearance. Put a few miles on it, and uh, it's looking great. The whole car looks great. The customer is super happy. Did do an alignment on it. It was out of spec before. The numbers really didn't change uh, much at all, to be honest with you. The rear didn't change at all. The front, just a little bit on the toe and on the camber. There's a shot of the clearance now yeah but it looks good nice aggressive stance anyway that'll do it Anderson design and fabrication uh, that's where this kit came from two inch lift this is for the 05 to 08 or 09 super outbacks and uh, it was fun. <laughs> Till next time, my friends from Farpoint Restorations. Take care.